Hi! So my name is Lara, this is Theatre of Science. If you're watching, you are the Science Alliance. That is our crew, that's what you've called yourselves. But you are the cream of the Science Alliance, because I do shows and I do chats, don't I? But this is Home Ed, where you actually, hopefully, learn something and put it in your brains and tell it to me and ask me questions and stuff. So, it's a second plants lesson. We did cells last week, but happily, you don't need to know anything really about last week to understand this week. So welcome, if you're new. We're going to learn about roots. Roots do three three main things you got to know about. The first thing you got to know about is key stage one and key stage two stuff. So imagine that in 10 seconds time, one of the walls of the room you're in is going to lift up and a stiff breeze is going to blow through, like a strong wind. What do you do? Show me what you do with your body. Stand up. I'm going to get you to do two little poses. Do your pose, okay? Three, two, one, pose. You get 100 pounds if you can stand up and survive this strong wind. You're not allowed to hold anything onto anything. What are you doing? You're probably doing this, aren't you? You're, you're, you're bracing yourself. Hello, Thomas in Northampton. You've got your feet apart, haven't you? You're not standing like this. You're standing with your feet apart. People who saw my forces lesson uh, last time, if you didn't, then totally don't worry about it. But I love how science fits together. Um, we did about why double-decker buses don't fall over and lines of action. So if um, the centre of mass of a tree is there and the line of action is down here, if the tree's got no roots, as soon as the tree does this, the centre of mass, the line of action is beyond the base and it falls over. If you, if you didn't see the lesson, honestly, don't worry. But if a tree has nice big roots, you've, it's got a very wide base. So it could even do that and it wouldn't fall over. It's just like you. You know that in your head. That's why you're spreading your feet apart. So the, the number one thing that roots do is they anchor trees into the ground. They stop trees falling over, all right? However old you are, you got to learn that. And the second thing they do, now I want to imagine that the breeze has come and gone, but now it's extremely cold in your room. It's super chilly. What are you going to do? Hmm? What do you do? What are you doing? It's super chilly. Do me a super chilly pose. Go. Huh? Is it? What are you doing? You're not doing this, are you? Oh, chilliness. You're doing this. You're probably sticking your hands in your armpits, um, like clamping down your arms to your sides. You are making the surface area of your body smaller. That's what you're doing. We'll talk about that in a sec, but now we've got to do our activity. Have you got a potato? Oh, Alexandra has dissected a plant at school. Oh, that does sound cool. Oh, Alexandra, you're making me want to dissect a plant. This series of plants, we're sort of going to look at how plants work and then we might get to their bits a bit later. Okay, if you don't usually use a sharp knife, please get an adult to do this bit or ask permission before you use a sharp knife to chop a potato. Um, but what I'm going to do is, got a potato, got a sharp knife, got a chopping board. I'm going to take a chunk off the edge of my potato, about that much, see? About, it's an unfortunate example, but about the width of a finger off the side of the potato. There we go. And then, with the big bit, I'm going to slice a thin bit off the bottom, like off the, the big wide bit, okay? I'm just going to slice a thin bit off and that's just so it'll sit on a table okay did you get that so i've got a big bit of potato with a little bit shaved off the bottom so that it sits on the surface flat and i've got this chunk uh, first of all i'm going to do something with this chunk you just want really all we're trying to do with this little chunk is cut two squares of potato that are the same size that don't have any uh, bits of skin on so I'm just going to cut a bit off that, so I've got two exposed sides and then I'm going to trim it down. It doesn't really matter how big the squares are, so that I've got a bit of potato, like a big square or rectangle of potato, that doesn't have any skill on it, comme ça, regard. And then I'm going to cut that in half, so I have two small chunks of potato. Okay, are you following so far? Two small potato chunks, yeah? Right, there you go in there. Um, get rid of that. Now this big bit of potato, what we're going to do is slice a bit off the top as well. Just the same you did at the bottom. Slice a bit off the top. There. So, I've got a potato now, which is flat on the bottom so that it rests, and flat on the top. And what I'm going to do, I will talk for a long time after this, don't worry. So if you're catching up, you can kind of listen and cut at the same time. What I'm going to do is, is make two little holes in the top of the potato. I'm going to use my sharp knife and just 
sort of stick it in and then twist it so that I gouge a hole out of the potato. Sorry, potato. You know, you guys know I grew up on a potato farm. I did. I did not eat any carbohydrate except potato until I was about, well, until I left, till, literally until I left home and went to university. There was no pasta allowed in the house because pasta wasn't free and potatoes were free. <laughs> so I'm a bit over eating potato to be honest with you. Quite happy with this activity. Right, mm. it's quite tricky to do this. So I'm sort of spinning my knife around, okay? So I've got one hole and I'm just gonna put another hole in the other side. One of these holes we are going to fill with salt and the other hole we're gonna leave alone. And then at the end of the lesson, we're gonna see what's happened. Super cool, this is one of those activities that I haven't really seen on any like science blogs. Just one YouTube video of this guy who teaches biology. But I thought it was a really nice one. Okay, so you've kind of got like a little sort of wally face like that in your potato. Then, hopefully you've got two glasses of water. <laughs> There's no comments, but I'm assuming that's just because everyone is very busy chopping stuff. One of the glasses of water leave alone, and the other glass of water pour a load of salt in. There you go, that's so beautiful. Oh, like snow. There you go. So one glass of water leave alone, the other glass of water I've put a load of salt in. And then you get your two chunks of potato and you've guessed it one chunk of potato goes into the salty water and one chunk of potato goes into the normal water and then you just leave them be we, to be honest we probably won't see any result of that uh, before the end of the lesson this activity a glass of salty water and a glass of normal water and a little chunk of potato in each that's for you to um just look at in like a few hours time and see what happens give them a squidge in a few hours see what happens and hopefully, if you've watched this lesson, you should be able to tell me why what's happened has happened. Right, let's go back to our little, little warly faced potato. You've got two holes in a potato. All I want you to do is fill one side with salt. I got a bit carried away yesterday and just spilled salt over the whole potato. Let me make my hole a little bit bigger. I have quite deep, quite deep holes. There we go. Pour some salt into the hole. It's already going better than yesterday's lesson because um, my two-year-old isn't screaming at the door and I haven't had to go for five minutes. There you go. So now Wally's got like a little eye patch of salt. And I'm going to put that on a plate. And pour some water onto the plate. And I'm getting a bit of a reputation. People are always laughing at me because every single thing that I do it says uh, food colouring optional. But I'm gonna stick some food colouring in there because why not? When did food colouring ever make anything worse? I forgot, do you need to re-stir if the salt settles? Um, no, you don't have to. Yeah, I'd give it a stir. You don't have to. There, I'll put some food colouring on this plate. And let's sit the potato in the plate of water. Potato activities <laughs> in the foot. Biology is so practical, I love it. Okay, so we're just going to leave both of those uh, there. Just to have a little sip. Did you both get, did you all get that? Okay. You've got a potato with two holes in it and a salt, salt in one of the holes and the other hole just nothing. And that is sitting in just a plate of normal water. And you've got two glasses one's got salt in it and one's got nothing in it it's just water and you put a piece of potato in each is that okay yeah all right well you can you can keep going with that ask me any questions you like i've got green water gosh <laughs> maybe maybe you'll see a doctor emma oh, no. right shall i do some teaching now now that all that's over so yeah what were you doing when you made your when you felt like you were cold and you were doing this. So do you know about surface area? So the, all the skin covers all the surface of your body, okay? Um, like the surface of this pen is just any bit of it that you can touch. Not the bit on the inside, 
the surface is just this bit that you can touch. Yeah, he done surfaces in maths. So the surface area of a thing is how much surface is exposed. So if you clamp your arm down to your side, you're reducing the surface area of your body because this bit of surface is now connected to this bit of surface, right? And it's kind of now on the inside of your body. So in physics, um, we say that you do that to keep warm because you lose heat from every bit of your body. So if you can reduce the amount of surfaces of your body, then you reduce the amount of heat you lose. So plants also use this idea of surface area. Uh, roots have a big surface area. So if you imagine that you make a sh that shape out of Lego bricks, or you, you, make, you get the same amount of Lego bricks and you made like that shape, they would both have the same amount of Lego bricks, but this one has more surface area. So roots have evolved to have a big surface area because what is the main job of the root? It's to collect water from the soil. Because plants need water to grow. Yeah, again, this is key stage one stuff. Plants need water to grow and the water goes in through the roots. Uh, plants also need minerals to grow. So they do take in minerals through the soil. That's why people put fertilizer on plants to help them grow better. We're going to concentrate on the water today. I will mention minerals at the end of the lesson. Um, yeah, so plants need a big surface area. Plants have got tiny little hairs on them. We did cells last lesson. They've got uh, things called root hair cells, which increase their surface area even more. So without telling you anything else about root hair cells, I'm going to give you a question and see if you can think about what a root, helps, what a root hair cell might need to be like. Here's a root hair cell for you. If you did last week's lesson, you might recognise some of its bits. We've got a little nucleus here, which is where all the DNA in the cell is. Got the cell wall, which keeps it nice and sturdy. So humans have skeletons, so we don't need cell walls. Animal cells don't have cell walls, but plants are made of cells that do have cell walls to keep them rigid. Tell me about this root hair cell. Some of these things are true and some of these statements are not true. Do they have a small surface area, a big surface area? Do they have chloroplasts that capture, capture energy from the sun that the plant uses? Uh, do they have a thin cell wall? Might they have a thick cell wall? Do they have a waxy waterproof coating? Do they not have a waterproof waxy coating? I give you, I give you one minute. She says confidently as if she has a clock in the room. Um, and if you're done with that, Think about how roots might push through the soil without getting damaged. If you were going to design a root, how would, what would you add so that they didn't get hurt as they shoved themselves through the soil? Alice and Arthur think they have two, four, and seven. Aha, marvellous. Hello, Isaac. Uh, well, yes, you are absolutely correct. Well done. So well done. I just told you they had a big surface area, so hopefully you got that one. Uh, no, they don't. This sometimes comes up at GCSE. They don't have chloroplasts that can capture energy from the sun. Why? Because roots are underground. It would be a total waste, wouldn't it, to put anything that can capture energy from the sun underground where there is no sun. Uh, but they do have a thin cell wall. Well done if you worked that out. Um, because a, whole, a root's whole job is to get water in. So you want the water to get in as easily as possible. So they don't have a thick cell wall. And um, nearly every bit of a plant, it's kind of like the plant's skin above the um, roots. Plants do have a waxy waterproof coating to protect them but yeah the root doesn't have a waxy waterproof coating because if your whole job is to get wet you don't want to put a waterproof coat on do you? So well done Rebecca. So very quickly you might have a plant with roots in front of you. Oh, look at these. So if you do a root at the very bottom I've learned I learned about this for you guys this is A level stuff actually um, but a root has something called a little root cap that you can't see, but um, it, the root cap right on the bottom is the bit that pushes through the soil. It's just to protect the root. That was quite a nice fact. There's three main zones in the bottom of a root. The very, la the very zone on the tip is where the new uh, root cells are made. So cells, uh, plants and animals make more cells by the cells just splitting in half. So right at the tip of the root, is where the root cells are splitting in half and splitting in half and making more roots. That's how roots travel through the soil. And then the second zone is the zone where those root cells get longer, which is just by them filling with water. The root cells get longer and they stretch. Thanks, Isaac. Yes, Layla, exactly. A root cap, like a little helmet. Yeah, they're very little. I don't, I don't know. I've never thought of roots as being cute before. I love the way you guys make me think. And then the last zone 
after these root cells have stretched is where they mature. So you'll notice you don't have any hairs on a cell, uh, on a root right at the bottom. The ha little hairs only start apparently when, where the cells mature. So there you go, the little structure of a plant there. Um, right, now this is the bit that, that freaked people out a bit yesterday. We're going to talk now about why the water goes into the plant. We've talked about what the roots are doing to get access to as much water as possible, but what actually makes the water go into the plant? If you stuck your finger in some water, then by and large, the water wouldn't sort of continue to travel into your finger, would it? And like up your arm. So what are plants doing? Well, come down here. We've got to talk about diffusion. Diffusion. We have looked at diffusion before. People who came to my very early chemistry lessons, I, would, I wouldn't recommend it. I'll do it again. I was finding my feet. But we talked about diffusion. I'll show you what diffusion is. <clears throat> um, diffusion is, well, do you know what it means if stuff is concentrated? Do you know what it means it's, if stuff is concentrated or diluted? So if you've ever asked someone for a glass of squash, some people will make very concentrated squash. They might pour like half a glass of squash and then top it up with half a glass of water. That's what my husband does, it's gross, I hate it. I like my squash to be very diluted. I like a little bit of squash and lots of water. So the opposite of diluted is concentrated. It's how many particles you've got per a certain area. Let's, I'll just show you. So I haven't got any squash because my kids drank it all yesterday, but I've got some food colouring. What I'm going to do is just put some food colouring into this glass and then not stir it and see what happens. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Wow, beautiful. Oh, come on. It's better than I thought. This water's quite warm, actually, which is helping. <gasps> wow, you can really see. Isn't that amazing? You would think that that was a still glass of water, but now I've put that food colouring in there, you can see that actually those water particles are speeding around and taking the food colouring with them. So that's called diffusion. Diffusion is, what we say in science, it's where something moves from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So food colouring, extremely concentrated, spreads out to where there is not any food colouring. And that's how we've looked at diffusion before. If there's, it's basically a posh word for spreading out. If you've got a lot of stuff, then it tends to spread out to where there is not a lot of stuff. Okay, that's diffusion, but we always look at it like that. And there's another way of looking at this. So the water is also diffusing because the glass of water is a hundred percent water. You could say it's highly, highly concentrated water and the food coloring um, doesn't have much water in it. It's a low concentration of water. So the food coloring moves into the water, but the water also moves into the food coloring. Right. This is where people started getting a bit freaked out, I think. So here's your water. Here's your food colouring. We're just watching the food colouring because it's pretty. But obviously here there's a high concentration of water and in the food colouring there's a very low concentration of water. There's not much water. So the water moves into the food colouring. This is important because what happens in a plant is that um, there's a high concentration of water in the soil and a lower concentration of water in the root. So water diffuses from the soil and into the root. All right. If you imagine that the food colouring is the root, the food colouring goes into the water, the food colouring doesn't have much water in it, so the water goes into the food colouring, right? It's the same with the root. If you put a root in there, the root has a low concentration of water in it, so water moves to the area of low concentration. Okay. Are you ready for my question sheet? Hmm, do I need to tell you anything else? I think I'm going to let you loose on this question sheet. Would the food colouring rise faster if it was hot water? Aidan, good question. Um, not so much rise, because diffusion is more just spreading than rising. Uh, but yes, it would, you're right, because the water particles would be moving around faster. Yeah. Okay. So if you freak out by this, you will not be alone. We're definitely onto like GCSE content now. This is not uh, something that you would... You would do the structure of root hairs. So if you're under 11... You would be, or if you're sort of 11 to 14, you would be asked to know about, you know, what does a root hair cell look like? Does it have a big surface area? But you wouldn't be asked about this. Can you see that? Is that okay? All right. So if you're, if you're a bit confused, maybe just try the first two questions about the coffee or this one. Like, have a go, but don't worry if you can't get it, is what I'm saying. Um, 
so right yeah have a look so the important thing to notice with this is that there's the same amount of coffee in each cup you've got two cups of coffee with the same amount of water in each but they've got different amounts of stuff in them one is about a quarter milk foam about half steam milk and about what a quarter espresso and the other one is half milk foam a quarter steam milk and a quarter espresso so which one of these coffees has the highest concentration of milk foam and which one has the highest concentration of espresso that might be a trick question and this is the tricky bit right please note that this cup of coffee has less coffee in it i've thrown a third cup of coffee into the mix so if you're feeling confident this one's not filled up to the top and it's about two thirds steamed milk and one third espresso if you consider this one then do your answers change and here i've just drawn you some diagrams the water is the white one and the black is something that isn't water which way is the water going to go here imagine that this is just a bowl of water with like a little membrane um in the middle of it you've got like two substances two liquids surround um separated by a sort of little sieve okay with holes in right i'm gonna stop wittering and let you get on okay so a lot of people saying cappuccino so i'll go through this first one with you well done, exactly, yes. So the cappuccino cup has the highest concentration of milk foam. It's got the biggest percentage of milk foam. Important to note that concentration doesn't mean how many particles, like how much stuff, it means the percentage, all right? So yes, it is cappuccino. I'll go through this bit, shall I? Um, and espresso, it was a trick question because they're both filled up to the top and about a quarter of the cup is espresso in each. So they're the same. They've got the same concentration of espresso in. Was that okay? Was that annoying? And do the answers change if we include this one? This was a really evil question. Um, can you even see it properly? That would help, wouldn't it? So here, um, which one has the highest concentration of steam of milk foam? Well, this one doesn't have any milk foam, so the answer is still cappuccino. But if we look at all three of these cups and we think which one has the highest concentration of espresso, well, they're each a third, a quarter full of espresso. So you might think they're all the same, but this one's got less coffee in it altogether. So actually the concentration of espresso in this cup is higher because here about a quarter of the liquid is espresso and here it's more like a third isn't it it's nearly half if you see what i mean i know that some some of you are very young like that is that, is, that would fox people who are doing their gcse's uh, this one which way will the water go from a to b or b to a just checking the comments um water goes from high concentration to low concentration so here we've got all water and this would be like a food coloring or something so the water is going to spread out into the food coloring and um, here we've got some water on this side so this one's like what uh, just under 50 percent just under half of water and this but this one's 100 percent water so the water's still going to go from where there's a high concentration to where there's a lower concentration because that's what diffusion is but here it's 100% water on this side and 100% water on this side. So again, sort of a trick question, uh, the water's not going to go anywhere. Obviously water particles are always moving around, so some of them would go that way, but some of them would go that way as well. And on average, uh, there wouldn't be like a one side that got more water than the other side. Okay, has Aidan written uh, a monster paragraph before we go? Oh, well done, Sarah. Sarah's telling me. Yes, B to A, B to A. Thank you. Right, Izzy. Izzy B, come on. I have a glass of water. I put some squash in. Through diffusion, the squash spreads out from the high squash concentration to the low squash concentration area. Yeah, exactly. From where there is a high concentration of squash to where there is a low concentration of squash. Beautiful. Through diffusion, the squash spreads out from... Yeah, from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Well, that's a nice one, Izzy. If that was a GCSE answer, you'd have to be like really fussy about definitely showing that you knew what diffusion was, if you see what I mean. So diffusion is movement of a substance from high concentration to low concentration, so the squash diffuses. Well done. Ah, here's Aidan's paragraph, and then we'll move on. Have a look at our activities. Squash spreads at different speeds depending on the concentration. Ooh! When the high concentration is used, Aiden, what are you doing? 
<laughs> when the high concentration is used, the squash is heavier than the water and it's almost like a water bubble explodes at the bottom and spreads upwards. When only a little squash is used, the squash is still slightly heavier, but there isn't a lot of it as it spreads out before it fits the floor of the glass. Wow, amazing. Oh my goodness, that is so your own words. That is brilliant. And it introduces a lot of stuff that we could talk about. Uh, I won't talk about it all because there's a lot of people here, but um, don't worry, Aiden, about gravity. You're right that obviously when you put a, um, when you put squash into water, gravity does act on it because gravity acts on everything. But there's so much water in the, part so many water particles in the glass that are all moving around. They sort of whack the squash to and fro. So it's not really about gravity. Don't worry about how low it gets. Have a look at your potato, folks. Oh, good. Emma is telling us about the potato. The salt has sunk. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, it is happening. There we go. So give it a little pat. Again, I would encourage you to leave all these because you'll see more in a couple of hours. But you might notice if you um, poke the salt that the salt is quite wet. Whereas this cup is totally dry. So I'll see if it'll, any of it will pour out to show you. Yeah, it's getting there, isn't it? It's getting there. So why has that happened? Well, what has happened is, I'll show you. Here we go, we'll finish after this. And then people who want to stick around for the GCSE bit then can. Izzy, if that's you. So you've got water down here. And the potato is made up of plant cells, yeah? P cells of potato. So what you've done is you've filled one of the holes with salt. 100% salt. Zero water. So cells, root cells, plant cells, they've got salt in them and they've got water in them. So down here on your plate you've got, let's say, 100% water. Obviously water that comes out of the tap is not pure water, but we'll say that it is. Flip, Lara, flip. There. So we're just going to say that water comes out of the tap is pure water. Sorry, not sorry to chemists. Um, let's say that the water in the cells is maybe like 50% water and 50% minerals. Again, I'm making this up. By minerals, I just mean salt, really. That kind of thing. And at the top here, we've got 100% 100, uh, 100 salt, haven't we? 100% uh, minerals. So what happens is, the water, the 50% water, 50% mineral mixture in the potato cell, um, spreads out into the salt where it's 0% water. So it goes from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. But then um, this one has now got less water in it. So the water from here moves up to here and the water from here moves up to here and the water from here moves up to here. And then um, you've got 100% water down here. So that's a very high concentration of water. So that moves into this cell, which is only 50% water, 50% minerals. So it, it carries on all the way up, you see? Does that make sense? And that's how roots work. That's how roots soak up water because um, the outside of the soil, obviously it's not 100% water, but the soil um, has got a much higher concentration of water than the roots. And a bit further along, the roots have got an even lower concentration of water. So the water gets pulled all the way through the roots until it gets to the stem, the tube that I was talking about earlier, which we will look at next week. Uh, right, that is, um, the end of the plants lesson, unless you want to stick around for the GCSE stuff, which it would be great if you would, but if you, some of you are very young, and that is an awful lot, like I say, all the stuff about diffusion with GCSE, so if you've made it this far, huge congratulations! Thank you so much for sticking with me! Um, Solusha, just reading the comments... Okay, good. Right, so we'll give you my little ad, shall I? And then we'll do our GCSE questions, because I know you guys love to see what's ahead of you. So my name's Lara, this is my science communication business. Kids, don't listen to this, just mull over what's just happened. Uh, adults, this is just for you. So I've been doing shows every week since the first lockdown began. Emma's only six. Emma, yeah, just have a rest. Just relax your brain. Well done. So my show on a weekend, it has like Lego story time and it has um, like activities and you bring and we dig into a topic. So we did sharks last weekend, didn't we? And it's nest building this weekend and they're always a lot of fun. Um, but this is home. This is like the kind of important one where you actually learn stuff.
If you want to support me, if you're thinking, oh wow, this is great, we're going to come to everything she does, then you could like my Facebook page, that'd be great. You could subscribe to my YouTube channel. You, you could go over to Twitter and Instagram and try and help me out in those places where I'm feeling a bit lost. Um, if you really like it, you can subscribe to Theatre of Science magazine. If you go to my Facebook homepage and you click sign up, then you get to this website called Patreon, which is like for podcasts and stuff people who put stuff out there for free so people can support me with three or five or ten pounds a month and you get different thank yous three pounds a month you get glasses that make you see rainbows and i'll send you a thing explaining how they work um and five pounds a month yeah i write this magazine now that ha that happened so my husband is a graphic designer which helps enormously so i write the content and the idea is it's a bit like a show it comes out every two months this one's on snow because it's January, so there's like the science of do yetis exist and lots of stuff about snowy owls and a little cartoon of Shackleton's adventures and yeah, as I always say, I'm very proud of it. I'm going to send you two free plastic bags. Ooh, so you can do that making ice cream activity. Um, but yeah, an enormous thanks. I know most of you are actually signed up already. Thank you very much, patrons. Obviously, I could not be doing this without you now. I would want to, but I would not be able to. Right, that's the ad over. Do you want to do... A little bit of GCSE. Izzy B, you still here? Feel free to ask any questions because you came yesterday and you're back. I'm delighted because you're a bit confused. So first of all, because um, some of you do a lot of reading on your own, don't you? When you look this up, you're going to find out that diffusion is the wrong word. You're going to be like, why didn't Lara tell me about this? So diffusion is, is correct, but there's a special word for when water diffuses oh seven and staying yes mate well done is he be still here good there's a special word for when water diffuses across a membrane so a membrane you really just think of it as like a little sieve so obviously we've talked about cells having membranes that the water goes in so a, a root hair cell would have a membrane <laughs> that water particles go into that it is diffusing but there's a special word for when water diffuses across a membrane and it is osmosis I remember coming across this word at GCSE, osmosis, and thinking, oh, oh, don't know about this, it's a weird word. Yeah, osmosis. So if you look up how water diffuses into roots, it's osmosis. But it's the same thing. It's just water diffusing, but it's the special word that you use for water diffusing, okay? And the other thing which Izzy B thought of yesterday, and I'm so impressed, is I told you that roots also take up minerals from the soil, didn't I? Okay, I'm going to do my terrible drawing. Um, so, how do they take in minerals, right? If you're a plant and you've got like 50% minerals in your, in your cells, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but there's only like 5% minerals in the, in the soil, because it's not a very mineral rich soil. You still want those minerals, don't you? You still, you still got to get those minerals, but there's a much higher concentration of minerals in you than is in the soil. So what do you do? How do the plants take in minerals? Do you understand this? Does this make sense? So soil generally has water in it, so the water goes into the plant by diffusion, but the minerals can't go into the plant by diffusion. The, the plant needs to get all the minerals that it can. It's got to use something else. It's got to use something called active transport. Again, you, you don't need to remember this unless you're doing this for GCSE. Um, but yeah, Izzy did notice yesterday that I'd said that plants took in nutrients and that that didn't make sense. So yeah, on the last lesson of plants before um, we start on another block, we are going to look at, before the Easter holidays, we're going to look at uh, something called respiration. Respiration is, what it means is, is just plants uh, getting energy from their food. So plants make their own food, we'll look at how they do that. And then they use that food for energy just like we do. And one of the things that they use that energy for, like obviously we use energy for waving arms at our phone cameras and for growing and talking. Plants use energy um, for sucking minerals out of the soil. And what we call that is active transport. Right, do you want to see a little GCSE question about this? All right, first GCSE question. When a plant cell is placed in pure water, it swells up. Explain why the plant swells. Two marks. Layla's just shouting, Osmosis! Hiya, Karis. 
Right, when a plant cell is placed in pure water, you're right with this, so pure water, so 100% water on the outside of this cell. Two marks for this. And obviously the plant cell is not 100% water. Let's say it's 50%. What, what might you need to say for two marks? A lot of people yesterday were talking about where it goes in the cell. Don't worry about where it goes. Concentrate on why the cell swells up. Aha, uh -huh, here's Elliot. Elliot been lurking. Gonna sock us with an answer right at the end. The plant swells because water moves by diffusion from the water where it's highly concentrated to the plant cell where there is lower concentration. Elliot, absolutely beautiful. You are using the keywords that if I'd been a bit kinder, I would have left up. So uh, Elliot has written an answer that includes the words high concentration and low concentration and diffusion. That is absolutely the words that I would start rattling out if I was going to try and get marks at GCSE. Yes, so I'll give you the answer. Um, it's because <laughs> it's so annoying how, how little you need to say to get marks at GCSE. Water enters the cell. But look, the things in brackets are the things that you don't need. So actually the only thing you needed to say to get one mark at GCSE was water enters. So why does the cell swell up when it goes into 100% water? Because water enters the cell, which actually is what a lot of you said, isn't it? If, yeah, 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 Tara. So if you've said soaks up water like a sponge, you would have got one mark because you've said that the water has gone in. Rebecca, the pure water moves from an area of high concentration to low concentration. Beautiful, yes. So the water goes in for one mark and it's by osmosis. But if you couldn't remember the word for osmosis exactly, you could have said because the concentration of water is greater outside the cell than it is on the inside. Well done. And second and final GCSE question. Here we go. Um, yeah, Aidan, exactly. Overthinking, mate. This is what I was talking about yesterday. So I did my science um, degree when I was like late 20s, early 30s. I did exactly the same thing. I'd been teaching A-level and I still just wrote far too much and ran out of time in this exam. I was so embarrassed. Like, I teach people not to do this. So here we are. We've got a table this time and no picture. They're being mean. Um, the table shows the concentration of minerals in the cells of a pond plant and in the water around it. So don't worry about this. All we know is that there are some plant cells which are in a pond and the concentration of minerals in the cells is 65 and the concentration of minerals in the pond water is two. So there's a higher concentration of minerals in the cells than there are in the water. Why would the minerals not move into the plant cells by diffusion? It's basically exactly the same question again, but you have to write the opposite this time. So see if you can write, based on what you've just heard, write the opposite of the last answer. Oh, hello Delaney. Because the cell has less water. Water moves in and it gets fatter. Oh, nice Delaney. So you're, that's the, um, sorry, my comments are really delayed. Because the cell has less water, water moves in and it gets fatter. Delaney, that is beautiful. Um, that's like, a lovely key stage three answer to make it a GCSE answer instead of saying has less water say that it has a lower concentration of water um this is the weird thing about concentration so imagine you've got two glasses and one of them you've put in loads of squash and one of you you've put in a tiny bit of squash but then you top up this glass with water well, actually, the concentration of squash in this glass is 50% because you've got 50% squash and 50% water. But the concentration of squash in this glass is 100% because you haven't added water. So that's why, Delaney, you're saying, sorry to pick on you, but it's such a good answer. Um, careful of saying more water because this cup has got more squash in it. But this is the higher concentration, if you see what I mean. That's why at GCSE you wouldn't say it had more water in it, you'd say it had a higher concentration of water in it. Oh, sorry, Zoe. I feel like I said your name a lot and really witted on there, but hopefully that made sense in the end. <laughs> Comes back to the comments to find zero people watching. Uh, the plant already has a higher concentration of minerals than the pond, so diffusion wouldn't work. Well done, Izzy. So for your second mark at GCSE, I think you would have to say why 
why diffusion wouldn't work? You just have to say why it's diffusion. Elliot, come on. Uh, diffusion only happens from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The plant cells have a higher concentration of minerals, so the minerals in the water can't diffuse into the plant cells. Elliot, are you the GCSE person? Someone said they were doing GCSE at the beginning. Yes, that is beautiful. Plant cell always has a high concentration. Um, yes, Rebecca. Excellent. So Rebecca's done the same. <laughs> Just reading that joke at the end. Rebecca and I think Izzy have said the same thing and got one mark. So why wouldn't it work by diffusion? Um, both of you have said concentration in the cells is higher than the concentration in the water. And that's why it wouldn't move in. But because it's GCSE and you have to write everything you know and not assume that they know that you know, you also have to say that diffusion is when something moves from high concentration to low concentration. Do you see what I mean? But that's just the exam practice like I knew that you knew that so first it, why won't it work by diffusion so first of all say what diffusion is and then say so that's why diffusion might happen Whew. Elliot is 11 right Elliot well I'll see you for uh, I'll see you, I'll see you all hopefully for GCSE revision sessions in a few years time I have a GCSE in two years nice Asian yes it's a very very good idea to study as soon as possible I think so this is why we're working on the explanations in these lessons and not just like facts because if you try and get the explanations in early hopefully it'll all be a bit easier hello Jess and Ezzy that is the end isn't it that's the end of my lesson <laughs> we finally got there even with the GCSE stuff so let's have a look and see if the potatoes are doing anything get your potatoes out of your glasses give it a squidge yeah, I'm starting to feel the difference. Oh, thanks, Flip, yeah. So, um, after a couple of hours, come back to these little cubes of potato, please. Give them both a squidge, see if you notice a difference, and if you want to post in my group and tell me why there's a difference, that would be awesome. All right, I'm not going to bother to flip, because I'm going to go. <laughs> Rebecca just likes saying flip. Why is the potato in salt water going brown and soggy? Emma, well, that's what I want to ask you. I must admit. This is one of the things that doesn't easily stay in my head. I will write it down for you. You're to but you, you are totally free to go. You know that, don't you? you of course you can go any time you want. Oh, but, um, Eli and Becky, you're very welcome. So what is happening in those glasses of potato, right? Well, one cube of potato, let's say it's 50% water and 50% salt in the potato. One of them is, oh yeah, flip. All right, fine, Rebecca. Bye, Heather. Uh, some, you've poured a load of salt into one glass, haven't you? So let's say that the concentration of salt outside here is 80%, so there's only 20% water and 80% salt, okay? Whereas this one is just pure water, so it's 100% water. So what's the water going to do in each situation? It's going to go from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. So in the glass with the pure water, the water is going to go from high concentration to lower concentration, which means water moving into the potato. And in the one where there's loads of salt and only 20% water, the highest concentration is inside the potato. So the water is going to travel from the potato and into the water. There you go. Probably it. So. Spoiler, you don't have to tell me now, but probably a good idea to explain it anyway. Okay, you lot, thank you so much for joining me. John, you're most welcome. Angela, you're most welcome. Right, I'm going to go and get ready for this uh, chat about ears. The salt takes the dewy coming in at the last minute to use the phrase potato juice. Thank you, Dewey. The salt takes the potato juice out. <laughs>